These are the streets of London's southern suburbs where people have been going about their daily business oblivious of some energetic activities beneath their feet. Well, perhaps not entirely oblivious, because some of them do have a hole at the end of their street. Now, in London, holes in the ground are not an uncommon sight. But this one is something altogether different. This one is a deep hole, 50 meters deep. It is, in fact, a shaft, and it drops away to one of the most remarkable tunneling projects in Britain this century. And this particular morning is a most important one for the men who are building the tunnel. Today is the culmination of 30 weeks of burrowing through the earth, and it's the day they'll push their section of tunnel into this shaft. This is breakthrough day. London is heading for the 21st century with a predictably huge increase in its population. Population thirsty in its growing needs for water. It's a challenge the Thames Water has met by building a unique underground supply system that is still in the making. The London Water Ring Main Project. An 80 kilometer tunnel, longer than the Channel Tunnel and deeper than London's underground. It will work rather like a below ground M25. More zigzag than round, and without the traffic jams, linking water sources to provide London with an efficient, high-pressure supply. By the summer of 1990, the ring main was already more than halfway completed, with this 11-kilometre drive being constructed by Fairclough Tunnelling. Fairclough have been engaged in tunnelling since early this century. They've developed specialist technical skills that put them at the forefront of underground engineering. That's why they were here on this remarkable project. At just over two and a half meters diameter, it's big enough, as someone calculated, to drive a London cab through it. Now, there's an idea for public transport. However, it'll carry not taxi cabs, but water. Almost 300 million gallons of it every day. Building a tunnel of these dimensions calls for the marshalling of a great many resources, material and human. It requires the setting up of site offices to provide engineering and administrative facilities. The team that's formed operates virtually as a company within a company. These are the people who run the contract, liaising direct with the client's engineers and dealing with subcontractors. Their site office is located just 50 meters or so above the tunnel that occupies their working days and nights. Waiting below is some very impressive hardware. Down in the hot, humid atmosphere of the work face is the machine making the final drive on this run. Its size and complexity are difficult to define in these cramped conditions. Here's how it looks in diagram. Its engineering title is EPBM, an earth pressure balance machine, purpose-built in Canada for the ring main. The machine pushes forward on hydraulic rams one meter at a time then stops to allow construction of the tunnel lining. Another push forward, and another ring of segments is erected. This primary lining consists of reinforced concrete segments, a meter in width and weighing a ton each. They're lifted and bolted into place to form a complete watertight ring of 2.83 meters internal diameter. Then the machine pushes forward again on its rams another meter, the width of the next ring to be installed. And the cycle continues, bolting a segment into place and then installing a new one to form a ring at a time. The annulus between tunnel wall and the new lining will be filled with a special grout to prevent ingress of water. You can see clearly the neoprene gasket as the segment is positioned. The presence of ground water was a major element on this drive. And so, every 10 meters approximately, they were injecting a heavy-duty grease to prevent water entering. Each segment has, built into it, a non-return valve to give a watertight seal. New segments are brought down from the surface in regular deliveries. They're made by Bucken Concrete, Fairclough's sister company within the AMEC group. 
Delivery from the bottom of the shaft to the tunnel face is by narrow gauge railway. The journey lengthens each day as the tunnel progresses. The same train will return with skips full of spoil which is being conveyed away from the work face. This is, in fact, thanit sand, a very wet mixture and not at all to tunnelers' liking. You can more clearly see why at the surface where it's stored for removal. This is precisely what a tunneler does not want and it was the cause of considerable consternation when it was first encountered. The first nine kilometers of Fairclough's drive had been accomplished using open-faced back actors, a type of machine very well suited to driving through London clay. High rates of progress were achieved. The going so far was dry and easy. They knew they would be pushing on into an area of wet thanit sand, but they didn't know just how wet it would be. As the back actor, still working in clay beds, approached the area of expected sands, it hit the first problem. High pressure water broke through behind the machine and started to fill the tunnel. They closed bulkhead doors to restrict flooding and stabilize the sand inflow, and the tunnel was allowed to flood. Fairclough Tunneling's contracts manager, Warren Mawson, describes the offending sands. It's probably got something like 30% moisture in its natural state and it's very wet sand. Uh, this sample here has been dried in an oven just to demonstrate the fineness of the sand. We can just pour a little on top where you see how fine it is. Saturated with almost a third of its volume of water under extremely high pressure, the thanid sand was transformed to this unmanageable slurry. Fairclough and Thames began an urgent operation to put things right. Their priorities were to seal the tunnel, stabilize the ground, rescue what they could of their machinery, and start a new drive with machinery that could cope with the sand. They decided to sink two new shafts, at Tootingbeck Common and at a nearby residential road. These shafts would effectively isolate the thanid sand. The recovery shaft at Tootingbeck was sunk to enable the abandoned bore to be recovered and to introduce the new machine. Then the ground was stabilized by freezing it to around minus 18 degrees centigrade. When it had frozen sufficiently to prevent further ingress of water, the shaft was completed to below tunnel level. Horizontal freezing then took place to construct a tunnel for the recovery of the abandoned machine. A short stub tunnel was excavated for the launch of the new machine. During this recovery and rectify operation, Fairclough had been designing a new machine to continue the tunnel. It was to be adapted from an original full-face design by the Canadian manufacturers Lovett, one of the world's most experienced builders of tunneling equipment. This is the Earth Pressure Balance Machine, which, with Fairclough's innovative design, is capable of excavating through the highly pressurized and wet sand, installing concrete segmental linings as it goes. With this machine, they could now attack the stretch of sand that had delayed them for so long. They would be burrowing away from the drive shaft at Tootingbeck Common, a 1.4 kilometer straight drive some 50 meters beneath these streets, to the reception shaft in Radbourne Road. At the bottom of the shaft, a handful of men are making the final preparations. It's something of an anomaly that they are armed with no more than shovels, whilst heading towards them on the other side is a million pounds worth of technologically advanced tunneling equipment. This final drive through thanit sand went very well indeed. The machine coped with the wet conditions and the specially designed bolted segments gave the required watertight primary lining. They were still encountering up to three bar ground water pressure, but taking it in their stride just as the machine was designed to do. There were now just a few meters to go before breaking through. On the other side of the workface, you could feel a distinct air of expectancy. There was an increasing trembling and vibration of earth and the immediate area was evacuated. The machine was clearly very close now. Just one final push was needed and they were through. 
a moment of great satisfaction for the tunnelers. We've uh, just completed a 1.4 kilometre drive through some very difficult ground conditions using a, uh, an earth pressure balance machine, the first of its type used in the UK. And we've just completed and come through within five millimetres of our proposed target line. So we're pretty pleased with it. And so was the client. Well, today we have had a mach machine breakthrough into the shaft at our Radbourne Road in Brixton. This, if you like, completes the successful drive through some of the most unique and most difficult tunnelling grounds ever attempted in this country. They took a little time to indulge themselves in some deserved mutual congratulations and a group posed for the photographs. Then it was time to get to work again. For one thing, the mound of earth they were sitting on would have to be shifted by hand. Something stronger than cordial was going to be needed when that was done. It would take some hours of digging to clear the face of the newly emerged machine and enable it to be rotated and examined. Next stage is, is to, to remove the machine from this shaft, which means shoving the machine completely out, free into the shaft, and then dismantling it and taking it away. That will then complete a, a tunnel drive that we've done from Merton to Battersea, which is some 12 kilometres. Down from the surface came a visitor with a special interest in the performance of the machine. The vice president of the Canadian manufacturer, Rick Lovett. It's very satisfying. It's, it's been a high profile uh, job for us and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of relief. We've got a lot of weight off, off of our shoulders. We're here. Uh, you, you, you never know in tunneling until you've, you've got your last ring in and, and the machine is punched through uh, that you've done your job and uh, we're quite happy. At the time of this breakthrough, Fairclough Tunneling had accomplished over 400,000 man working hours free of reportable accidents. An impressive record in the world of tunneling. They'd applied Fairclough's tunneling expertise to this most difficult of drives. They'd worked closely with their client to complete a very high quality project which, in spite of difficulties, was within budget and ahead of schedule. Their completion of this drive is a milestone in the construction of London's water ring main. It's due for completion in 1996. When that happens, Londoners will be turning the taps on some of the world's most advanced water technology.